Hello everyone, this is Ravi. So today we're going to remake this animation that I have done in Blender 3.0. Last time we used a method which is a very heavy E4 machine to operate. This time we're going to use a new method in Geometry Node 3.1 because there is a new dual mesh node available. So let's start. So here we in Blender, before I start I want to talk about the magic that we're going to use. So here, this is a very simple setup. I have this curved circle node and I have this field curve. So it looks kind of very kind of normal. We just fill the curve, we can choose the triangle and angle. However, there is a magic that we're going to do. So if I take the joint geometry and duplicate this curved circle, right now there is nothing happens within the solid view or wireframe mode. However, if I decrease the radius of the second curve, you can see what actually happens. So this is a little bit like the kind of bridge loop functions when we're using the procedural modeling tools in edit mode or so on. Okay. Although this only works on curve, but this is a very critical part for our magic. So here we're basically going to use these kind of methods to create all this kind of fracturing pieces within uh, the geometry. And let's take a point distance mode. The reason is that I do not really would like to bridge the loop, so I need to create a curve line and resample the curve sample curve so that it only creates one vertices and then I, let's just take a mesh line take the mesh line into the points and plug it into geometry uh, we need to realize the instance so now we actually see this kind of a cylindrical mesh that we created but I need to randomize the position so let's take a set of position and uh, you can take the random value nodes or you can use the presets you can download that for free from the link in the description uh, I'm going to disable this relative disable the average so that if I plug that um, either position or offsets then you can actually see these kind of interesting patterns if you increase the variances then they just increase the scale you can also increase the count of mesh lines so that there is more cuts being created but uh, this is just like kind of a weird fraction pieces uh, it's not a very interesting unless you put a dual mesh node so that you keep boundaries. So now this looks kind of a Voronoid fracture pattern. And this is controlled by the vertices that you generated at the most initial mesh line. So if you change the seeds, then the entire pattern will be changed. It's also possible that you can animate. Um, this kind of a position so that all this kind of Voronoid cell will be animated. So there are a lot of ways to play around with this setting. Here we've got the Voronoid pattern. We can directly do the Voronoid animation on the top of this geometry. So here I'm going to use a preset which is called Attribute Mesh. This is previously being called the Attribute Info node. So we split the edges so that we can get access to this kind of polygon center. Take a, a set position. Let's take a mixed RGB or you can use the mixed vector. Let's take the point locations. So basically point location and the polygon center are just uh, capturing the position attribute in different domain as I have explained in capture attribute tutorial. So now we have these geometries. We can go to the solid view. You can add a solidify modifier so that you add the thickness. You can also add a bevel modifier. However, it does not really look like it changed. So if we disable these boundaries, then the bevel modifier is not being clipped. Okay, uh, and you can add a set shaded smooth if you want. But uh, mm, yeah, anyway, so you can try to play around with these settings. But now we get all these kind of patterns. So the last thing we're going to do is to rotate all this kind of polygon. Basically, everything is in line with the last tutorial so we just directly plug these new vectors into the vector polygon center into centers i'm going to switch to ULA so that it's better being controlled by this align ULA to vector i think it will be renamed as align rotation to vector for clarity in the future for 3.1 but that's another story let's lock this interface create a uv sphere let's scale that this down and we can directly pull this UV sphere into the node tree. Take these locations, plug the rotation to rotation, take a Z. 
So now it does not really work. I've explained in an individual tutorial talking about this align rotation to vector. What we need to do is to take a vector mass to subtract with the original position. So now everything is being aligned. What if I would like to restrict this kind of rotation into a specific area uh, around this UV sphere? So this is the moment that we need to use this proximity for take a vector mass. So just to duplicate that, switch that to scale. Use the fourth into scale and it does not work unless unless we select this object. But instead of selecting this object, I want to use this location offset and the scale. There is a specific reason for me to do this. I will explain this later. So now if it's close enough, then it will affect this area. But if it's not close enough, then you have to scale this fold so that it affects the ground. Okay. The reason I'm uh, using these two linkages instead of select the object directly because I want to do a math function to multiply it to 110 so that this fold will always stay on the ground. So even if you elevate it, so technically speaking, it should still affect the ground, but the uh, the effect is not very obvious because they are looking at the object which is very high. So in this case, you just increase the maximum so that you compensate this kind of rotation. So this is the way you play around it. So this is the way you keep the height of your object while retaining the ability to affect things in the ground as you wish. Okay, so there are many different ways to play around, but basically this is it. So these are the new methods. So last time we used the decimate modifier and uh, many, many other things. Actually, last time we used the two geometry node tree because we need a decimate modifier. But uh, in this method, we no longer need a second geometry node modifier. We only need the solidify modifier and the uh, bevel modifier. However, I think uh, these two nodes will be integrated into geometry node tree in the future as well. But uh, this time, I only want to mention the basically procedural way to create all these kind of fracturing patterns uh, using the new dual mesh node. Um, so, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I'll probably see you next time. Bye bye.